Hey Facebook, so get this. Today, I know it's Easter Sunday, but we don't really celebrate a lot of like religious holidays like that. If we do, we're going to celebrate in our own way. So we decided that we were just going to do a fish fry and crabs today. So I fried some perch fish and I made some french fries. And then Chase decided that she wanted, see, I call it, what? You call it Dungeonese. I call it Dungeonese, but they're Dungeon, what? Dungeonese. Dungeonese crabs. So let me show y'all this big ass crab. Man, I've never seen a crab like this, and I grew up eating blue crabs. I've never seen a crab this big. Like, look. Look how big that crab is, dude. That's one freaking crab. Look at that and it's turn. a boy. How you know it's a boy? Boys are shaped like the monument. Girls are shaped like the Capitol building. Oh my so. gosh. Y'all don't understand. <laughs> like, See? Look. It uh, look like a little penis, right? So that's a boy. What? So you and the other one looks like a vagina? That, well, the Capitol building is a little more wide, you know. Like, you know. Y'all know. Oh my gosh. Let me say. Listen here, um, Carlos. You talk about uh. Los, don't be uh and I crabs. Got he doesn't you. like crabs. Nah, he don't eat crabs. He used to eat crabs though. Oh, but so you used to eat crabs. We ate them so much good, growing crabs. up. He didn't like to eat them no more. Mm. This one's for you, bro. <laughs> Listen, Los, you're gonna eat crabs with me when I come to. What's up, Bobby? Los, you're gonna eat crabs with me when I come to. Uh, he said damn yeah. crustaceans. You're going to eat crabs with me when I come to D.C. We're going to go to... Where we go to get the crabs, babe? The wharf. We're going to go to the wharf. <laughs> and we're going to eat us some, some damn crabs. Okay? Oh, yeah. Look at that meat. That meat look good. Um, babe, let me taste the piece. The first piece of meat that I bring out... Let me put some sauce on it. Oh, yeah, y'all. She has a special-ass sauce. <laughs> Look at that oh, sauce. You know I love you when I give you the first bite. When she gives you the first bite, yeah, she loves me, y'all. She loves me. Let me taste it. Oh, hang on. Shit, let me show y'all. <laughs> Look. <laughs> With the sauce. Mmm. 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 <laughs> Baby, you should have seen it where I put that crap leg here. <laughs> anyway, that was real good. So this is our Easter Sunday. We're eating these big Dungeonese crabs. I had my fried fish already. I haven't fried fish since I was a little girl. Because we used to do fish fries like every freaking Friday. Chase, never give up all the culinary secrets, not the sauce. Chase, your brother said that. The camera looking at you. You have oh. to say. <laughs> oh, don't give up the sauce? Well, they don't, they don't know what I put in the sauce, but... You know. Listen, Los, I can never duplicate that sauce. I went out of town with my company mm -hmm. for a meeting, and we went to, where did we go back? What's that place called that we get crab bass from sometimes? Hooters. Oh, yeah, we Hooters. We went to Hooters. Ah, uh, you stupid. And I, tried, <laughs> and I tried to remake that sauce, and I'm like, call her on the phone. Baby, how do you make this sauce? So I can tell this people to bring me some. She's like, I. She tried to tell me. I tried my best to duplicate it. Cause it's after not you, freaking working. After you eat the sauce, you can't eat crab no other way. You gotta have the sauce. With you them. gotta have the sauce. <laughs> yeah, we seen that Lowe's that you having dinner at the Ben's Chili Bowl. What is Ben's Chili Bowl? <laughs> Ben's Chili Bowl. <laughs> it's like a DC staple, man. They got the bomb hot dogs, the bomb chili. Mm. Man, they got everything. Mm. They even got veggie burgers in that joint. They, they, they don't want... Veggie burgers? Yep. You, let me tell y'all. Let me turn it to me real quick. Listen, guys. Freaking falling in love with veggie burgers. I, I don't even eat meat. I don't eat beef. But I used to eat turkey burgers. Now, I don't even want a turkey burger. I want a veggie burger. If I go anywhere, I want a veggie burger. Or a black bean joint. Or a black bean I'm just so in love with that stuff now. Okay, so this is what I really want to tell y'all. So, 
Chase and I are watching Naked and Afraid. And she really, her dream goal is for us to go live in the woods, y'all. And if we anybody, from <laughs> if any of y'all know me, y'all know I'm not an outdoorsy type of chick. I don't go outside much. Well, let me just say, I didn't go outside much unless I was going to be cute at a party or an event or something. However, being with this woman has gotten me mm -hmm. to liking the outdoors. And, and I'm from the city. And she's from the city. <laughs> and I'm from the country. I used to play in the woods when I was younger. But, you know, I'm not doing it anymore. But now I go hiking with her. I will go outdoors. I will do some things with nature. So we've been watching Naked and Afraid. And I didn't know this woman is so freaking smart when it comes to being outdoors. Like, I will trust her with my life. If I had to live in the woods somewhere, I would trust this woman with my life because I feel like she would save me. I didn't know that sap. What you say that sap do? Hang on, let me put the camera. <laughs> what does that do, babe? Oh, well, if you're out in the woods and you're trying to create fire, but everything is wet, then you should just try to cut a hole in a tree or pull the bark back from a tree that has sap in it because oil and water don't mix, and sap is an igniter. So if you put some sap on the tinder or the wood that you're trying to light, it's going to ignite better than just, you know, using the wood, so... I think that kind of impressed her. She's like, man, we going to have fire? I'm like, hell yeah, we going to have fire. <laughs> <laughs> and what else you taught me about? The poisonous snake? Oh. How do you identify a poisonous snake? Well, actually, my mother taught me this. Is that a poisonous snake will have a pit in, in the head of it. So if you see a snake, if you look at the two eyes, right under the two eyes, if it's a little hole right there, like a gill or something like a hole, that's called a pit. That pit means that snake is poisonous, leave it alone. Also, on the tail of the snake, they have like these things that kind of look like scales. If it's one single row, that means the snake is poisonous. But if it's two rows, they'll be beside each other. They'll look kind of round like scales. There'll be one here, one here. If it's two rows, then the snake isn't poisonous. But you can eat a poisonous snake. You're just going to be a little bit more careful with trying to kill that joint. You can eat a poisonous snake? Yeah, they just ate a rattlesnake like two episodes ago. They ate a rattlesnake. You can eat them. The venom isn't like... The venom isn't in the meat? It's not in the meat. No, nah, no, nah, it's not oh, in the wow. meat. So, you know, as long as you cook, skin it, cook that joint, you know, he even ate the heart while it was still pumping. That, that joint was crazy. Let me tell y'all this. Listen, <laughs> listen, I'm going to bring it back to me real quick for a second. So, listen, with the Vision Avenue, we are planning a camping trip. And <laughs> I don't want y'all to be afraid because Chase is going to make sure we are okay. That we can survive overnight. But it's going to be a camping retreat for um, singles, couples, all women. We're going to learn some real good stuff about relationships, about who you are as a person. We're going to grow together. We're going to learn a lot of things. And her knowledge, I don't know, her knowledge, it really does impress me. I haven't met anyone like her before. She's so freaking unique. And it's just so amazing. Thank you, boo -boo. You're welcome, boo. <laughs> it's so amazing to me because I feel like every single day, I'm learning something new about this woman. Listen here, Los. We're not always excluding you. <laughs> when we do our bike rides, we had a whole bunch of men, did we not, babe? Yep. A whole no, bunch of, hang on, let me I'll turn it to you, go ahead. Yeah. But nah, you and daddy got bikes, so when we get to D.C., I'm going to have a pickup truck. we just, you know, get it popping. I'm going to bring my bike up there, I'm going to bring her bike, and you're going to ride too. You know we had the best bike ride of our life back in the day, yo. <laughs> so, you know, don't, don't feel excluded. I'm just going to have to take more trips home. And too, also, when we're going, we're going in, um, we're going for our anniversary. June. 
Hmm? We're going in June for our anniversary. Oh. Yeah. Okay. No, July. July. Yeah. <laughs> so we are going to come to DC in June. But yes, let me get back to what I was saying, Lois. I'm gonna come back to you. <laughs> I feel like I learn something new about this woman every day. And it's something new that amazed me. But not only am I learning something new about her, I'm learning something new about myself. I'm learning to open up more and to experience different things. I've never been the type of person that wanted to be outside and wanted to go and play tennis and go bike riding. I used to do that, of course, as a kid. But as an adult, no. I didn't care about going hiking and being in the woods and doing all these things that she's ex exposing me to. And I feel like with me participating and doing different things that I haven't done or haven't been open to, I'm learning more about who I am as a person and it's making me better. And that's what relationships are supposed to do. It's supposed to make you better and it's supposed to enhance you. And if you're not willing to open up and enjoy new experiences, you're going to stay in your same old box. And you're never going to meet the type of person that's going to compliment you and to make you a better person. Babe, you got something to say before I... Oh. Oh, hang on. I'm going to turn it to you. Hang on. I'll just turn y'all. Sorry. No. Go. Hold on a second. Cheers to y'all. Cheers. Because where's my one? Oh, it's down um, there. But also, I think a lot of times when we get in relationships, um, we still have a single person's mentality. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all about me. It's all about what I want to do. I mean, there's certain things that that are going to come up that she may want to do that I particularly don't want to do. But I'm going to engage and try it out just because I love her and because I want to show her I support oh, yeah, what she, she has going me. on. Girl, knock it off. <laughs> I want to support what she got going on, too. It can't be all about me and what I want to do. You know, excuse me. But also, when people do stuff for you and with you, you have to recognize that, you know, they making a sacrifice for you or they submitting to you. So... Recognize that, you know, within your relationships that you're trying to build, don't look at it as, man, I got to go out and do this or that, but look at it as I get a chance to learn something new about my partner. I get a chance to be a more, you know, a part of their world when typically I, I wouldn't have been able to know these things. I feel like us being outside and experiencing all this stuff with nature is team building. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's helping us learn how to work together, how to be frustrated and angry and, and hot and sweating and not really wanting to be out there, but finding a, the best way that we can work together to make the situation good. That is so true. I'm turning Because let me tell y'all, this girl will sit up there and ride this bike, her bike, and be leaving me all the way behind. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, she will stop. <laughs> It'd be like five or ten minutes <laughs> until I catch up with her. But she's patient. She's patient with me, and I appreciate that. But that also, those bonding activities teach you how to be patient within the relationship when it comes to other stuff. Mm -hmm. Like being a, when you're working through issues, you know, now she can be patient with me and she can communicate her needs better or I can communicate my needs better. I know she's going to sit there and actually give me the time that I need to relate to her what I want without rushing me. And that's very important. So you have to get out there. You have to bond. You have to try new things. You need to. And if it's something that you really don't want to do, then or your partner doesn't really want to do, it's okay. That's what your friends are for. Oh, facts. Right. That's what they're for. They're the people that's, that you're supposed to go to. Your girl don't want or your man don't want to listen to you complain all day about your work life. Then you go and talk to your friends about your work life. Or you go, if they don't want to hang out at the club, then you know on Saturday nights you go hang out at the club with your friends. And have a good time. Bring your ass back home. That's all you have to do. It's not, it's not about, they don't have to like every single thing that you do. It's okay. You get you some friends that enjoy the same stuff that you do. You go spend time with them. Then the rest of the time you spend with your boo. I think that's a problem. Mm -hmm. you, babe. Well, go ahead. I know. I was going to say, 
I'm glad you said that because I think that's a problem in a lot of people's relationship. They feel like they have to do everything with their girl or everything what they do. No, you don't. Mm -mm. You're an individual. You're your own person. Right. You was doing your own thing before that person. Right. Like I said before, it's all about being who you are, but being who you are with somebody else. Right. You know, it's, it's not difficult to do. Mm -hmm. You know, when you make a decision to be with somebody, it's not putting a chain on you like, oh, that's my old man or that's my old lady. And people say that. They put these negative connotations behind what a right. relationship is. A relationship means that you're working together with someone. Mm -hmm. You're becoming a teammate with someone. Right. Y'all supposed to be trying to become one and be on the same page. So stop segregating yourself and separate, you know, separating yourself and feeling like, you know, if your girl or your dude don't like something, that it mean y'all need to break up or it mean oh we just ain't gonna work out. No, you still can work out. You just gotta find a happy medium somewhere. Right. Because the key is to communicate with your partner. If you're able to communicate with your partner and talk about your wants and needs, you the, the, let me tell you what you need. You need trust, communication, respect. Those are the three things that you need in your relationship for it to survive. If you have those three things, you're going to be fine. It's when you lose those three things that's when the relationship is fucked up. So you want to make sure that you're able to communicate, you're able to trust, and you are respecting your partner and you're receiving the respect that you need as well. That's it. That's it. That's all you need. It's not about, well, I need you to do this with me. I need you to come here with me. I need you to do this. No, it's not about all that. Because, I mean, the other night I went out with my girl. I had a good time. Mm -hmm. I had a fun time. Look, Hang on, babe. Let me get to you. She, <laughs> I was telling her, too. I was like, man, I must really trust you because she came in. With, like, I don't even know when she came <laughs> I just woke up from work and she was right there. Later on, I found out she came in at like, what, 3.30? I guess. About 3.34. I ain't sweat her. You know, normally I call and check on her, but I was so tired I went to sleep. But, you know, you should be able to trust your partner out. You know what I'm saying? I don't go out like that. Yeah, like she maybe don't go out like that, two but to three months. You gotta. Now I'm not saying, oh, well, you know, let your dude or your or or your girl stay out all times of night and wild out and all that other stuff. You know, you gotta have some type of consistency. And I feel like I have a consistent partner. You know, she needed to unwind. She needed to vent. Her friend needed to vent. So of course, girls gonna go out and start talking and drinking and. Time gonna fly by, you know, but also she communicated to me before she even left what it was gonna be. I'm like, cool. I'm sleep. I got work in the morning. I'm not going with y'all. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> Okay. That was good, man. Uh -huh. You made some good points. I'm trying up. Uh -huh. Okay. So there's another thing that I want to discuss when we come back next episode, or I don't even know, these are not even episodes, these are just random ass posts that we do every now and again, but the next thing I want to talk about is understanding that Chase and I don't have a perfect whatever we're doing. I, I say relationship, but we don't really call it relationship, we just, we who we are, but we don't have a perfect relationship. We don't have all the answers. I'm a therapist. I'm human. I go through shit. I face issues just like you all do. What I have inside of me are some tools that I know that have worked in the past for me, that have worked for my couples that I counsel, that I work for that have worked for the individuals that I've counseled. I got something between my teeth. No, I don't. <laughs> Los, you're mean. <laughs> Let me see. Because you know me, I'll look in the camera in a second because I don't get embarrassed easily, Los. It's nothing between my teeth. Anyway, I can just give you all tools to help you grow and be better people and be a better couple. So next episode, Chase and I are going to talk about we have good times and bad times, but we have learned how to, what, what I'm trying to say, babe? We learn how to communicate yeah. through those bad times so that they don't linger on and last 
forever. Right. People be having bad times, and they bad times, bad oh, times. Oh, let me turn it to you, because it's just looking at me. <laughs> Sorry. But nah, they bad times be lasting, like, days and months. The same bad time they had six months ago, they got next year. You know, so you got to have the tools necessary to get you to work through those issues and problems so that they're not reoccurring. You're not doing the same thing over and over again. Right. You're feeling like you stuck mm -hmm. or you stagnant in your relationship. Because let me tell you, we've learned how to argue effectively. Yeah, we've learned true. how we learned the difference between debating and arguing. Mm -hmm. You know, we learn all these things because we make a conscious decision to be better people every day that we wake up. Can I talk about what happened? I don't know what you're talking about. That was a I don't know, go ahead. Okay. Dang. Well, I'm just going to say it real fast. So, I got, we kind of got into a little tiff one day eating lunch. And I just kind of got up and walked. <laughs> oh, yeah. She left me, y'all. I she left her. I left her ass right there in that restaurant. Because <laughs> I was, I fell bad into a corner. So, I was like, all I know is that I want to get up and I want to get out and I don't want to sit here anymore and be in this silence and but I feel, drove so she didn't go that far yeah I couldn't go that far I had to just go stand by the car and wait for her to get there <laughs> <laughs> but the point is this that we didn't you know we didn't talk about it that day but she did come to me which is effective, and she should have. Because I, I came to her and I apologized. I'm like, I'm sorry for getting upset, whatever. And so then um, the next night, she was like, babe, we just need to talk. I'm like, okay, we're going to talk. I'm like, oh, man, don't nobody want to hear that. Y'all yeah. know we hate to hear that we need to have a talk type thing because you already know it's not good. It's bad news. So I'm like, I don't want to talk. But okay, I fixed my little wine glass because I have to get my wine when I need to, when we have to have a talk. <laughs> I need my wine. She need her, her drink and we can talk because we will talk till 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. Anywho. So she told me, she was like, you know, it hurt me. I hope you don't mind me telling you. Go ahead, man. Okay. So it bothered <laughs> me that you walked out on me. And, you know, that was a revelation for me. And it was embarrassing because I know yeah. the bartender and the chef at the restaurant. <laughs> and the bartender was like, dang, you messed up. Go fix it, Chase. You better go fix it. I'm like, dang, man. So now my peers are looking at me like, I, it's something going on in our relationship. You know, that's embarrassing. But that is embarrassing. You're right. But shit happens. We living in real life. You know what yeah. I mean? We, we, didn't nobody draw us on a coloring book. So I understand shit happens. You know? Yeah. But <laughs> let me tell y'all, though, that this is what I got from that. What I got from that is this. That that's not her love language. <laughs> so my ass ain't walking out no more. Because she said it hurt her. It bothered her. So for me, that stayed on my heart a lot. For the last, like, the last two or three days. That really bothered me because I don't like to hurt her. I don't like for her to feel her at all. It bothers me to my soul when she's hurting. So to me that made me realize okay Mika we we can't do that that's not healthy behavior and it's not it's not healthy behavior because you know I've done it before in a relationship or two and it's not healthy behavior I have to stop it and I'm like I'm not doing it again I would not walk out on you thank you baby you welcome boo <laughs> I don't care how back up in that corner I feel I'm gonna sit my ass right there and I'm just going to sit in that moment because sometimes stuff happens where you have to sit in the shit that you create. You just have to sit in there and you have to smell it. You have to feel it all over you until, it's, until you get through it. And that's just what I have to do. So those are the things that you learn about your partner as you grow with them. You learn the things that hurt them, that bother them. And see, you can do it two, one or two ways. Some people use that as leverage to yeah, hurt them again. They do. Or. Because yeah, they know that's how they get to them. Because so they, they know that. Right. So they'll keep doing it. But you have to be the type of person that says, okay, I learned what bothers you. I learned what hurts you. I love you enough to not do that shit again. And call it a day. And I know y'all, I curse a lot. I'm sorry. 
And some of y'all probably don't curse at all, or y'all like Mika is a cursor. But if you a client of mine, you already know that I'm a cursor. So if you're not, then you may not want to have me as a as a counselor because <laughs> I will cuss and I'm gonna cuss you too if you're not doing what you're supposed to do to be better. Because at the end of the day, you have to want to be better. Anyway, that was it, baby. You got anything else you want to say? And I'm going to read some of these comments that people have made before we go. Nah, just that this crab is good as hell. It looks so good. <laughs> I've been sitting up here watching that crab. Can this all eat, I got left. one more piece? Just Dang. One. Nah, hold on. Just give me some nah, of that meat that's in the body. Nah, it's you dungeonous, so, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of meat everywhere. Okay. But anyway, yeah, I think that was a good lesson learned because... Yeah, I did learn a big lesson. Yeah, because the issues, you never know what underlying issues your partner has as well. You yeah. may know a little bit about things that happen in their life, but, you know, I, I recognize that I had abandonment issues. And I have other things going on that when she walked out, I'm like, man, this person is leaving me. Like, in my mind and in my heart, it's deeper than just walking even, out. Yeah, just, just walking moment, out yeah. or even what we was talking about. So at that point, I'm not even concerned with what the argument was about. All I'm thinking about in my mind is that here go another person, you know, just walking out of my life, you know. And so I think you had to really, really pay attention to your partner and talk to them about their past. And that's going to help you deal with them in your present, you know, be be aware, you know, what I'm yeah. saying? be in your kundalini. That's the point. I, I agree that, and when you brought it up to me, you was like, you know, you left me. And the first thing I started thinking about, I'm like, you know, my baby is right. She has issues with abandonment. So why me leaving her is going to be a bigger deal than just, oh, you just walked out of the restaurant real quick. It's going to be, damn, you really leaving me, babe. Like, you're, you're leaving my spirit. You're leaving my soul. You're leaving my heart. It's not the same as... I just walked out in that moment. Mm -hmm. And that's why it really hurt me and bothered me because, you know, that's the first thing I'm going to think about. Mm -hmm. I have to start thinking about the bigger picture. We can't just focus on a small picture. So, you know, yeah, I'm telling you. We good now, though. Yeah, we good now. That's right. Make sure you let them know, babe. We good. Ain't no breaking up. <laughs> But no, seriously, I, I'm I'm grateful because I'm learning so much about myself. I'm learning the way that I respond to situations, and it made me think about my faults in my past relationships. You know what? Damn, maybe she was right. I did do this, so I did say that. Oh, I did act this way. You know, now I'm trying to grow and be a better person. Because I don't want to make the same mistakes that I made in my last relationship. Anywho, so Los, what he said? Oh, he said that we're going to go bike riding, Chase. We're going to ride through the wooded trails. So that's good. Uh, and then um, Rice said, oh, wow, well, I cannot handle that well if, if somebody had walked out on her. And she said her girl hangs up the phone. I want to talk it out, and she doesn't. You know what, Rice? I want to say something about that. Let her hang up the phone. It's okay. But next time, before she hangs with that phone, you let her know when y'all are not um, in an argument, when you're not, you know, when you're just having a good day. You let her know, you know, when you hang up the phone, this is what it does to me. Can you please not hang up the phone on me? I feel disrespected. I feel hurt. I feel bothered by it when you hang up the phone on me. And then maybe you all can explore some options. If she's feeling trapped or she's feeling upset, she's feeling hurt about something, let her know, you know, when you're feeling a certain kind of way, just tell me, you know what, babe, I don't want to talk about it right now. Do you mind if we kind of hang up? I'll call you back a little later. We can work through it. And then you allow her that space, allow her that time and say, yep, you're right, babe. Let's, let's talk about it another time. Give her her time. Give her her space. And that way, she's being respectful to you. And then you're also being respectful to her. And then you don't have to worry about her hanging up on you. And then she doesn't have to worry about confronting the issue that she's not ready to confront mm -hmm. in that moment. Hey, Mary. 
<laughs> so let me know how that works for you. I hope you do that. I hope you all can work through that because hang up the phone is one of my biggest pet peeves. Like, don't ever hang up on me. Chase and I have hung up on each other a couple of times. However, we have talked about it. And we don't hang up on each other anymore. Nope. <laughs> I just be like, I'm out. You say what? I said, I just be like, look, man, I'm not going to fuss with you. I know we got to get, I know we got to get this argument out of the way. But look, let's just get off the phone because I'm mad. I know me. If you try to keep me on the phone, y'all know when a girl or a dude want get yeah. don't want to get off the phone and they trying to argue and keep you on the phone and you like, look, I'm telling you I'm pissed off and I'm about to say some crazy shit to you, so you might want to let me get off the phone. Yeah. At that point, your partner need to recognize it's escalated to the point where y'all not even arguing about the same thing. Y'all yeah. now it it's a respect issue. And now it it's going into something deeper then the issue at hand, and you're not going to work it out anyway because y'all too mad. So go ahead and let that person off the phone if you're the one trying to keep them on the phone. And, you know, if, if you're the opposite person trying to get off, just let them know. Like, look, man, I want to resolve the issue, but I don't think we're going to get it out of the way over the phone. So I even need to meet up with you or wait till I get home or whatever you need to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because both people have to respect each other. That's true. Another thing, too, if you're face-to-face, you know, a lot of, hang on, sorry. If you're face to face with someone and you're having an argument and it's like, you know, I can't take this anymore. If I tell you that, that I can't take it anymore, give me my space. Let me know. Let me go. Don't stop. Women do this a lot. Stop running after somebody to get them to listen to you. If they tell you, leave me alone, let me go. Let me walk out the door. Let us let let their behinds walk out the door. I'm not gonna curse anymore. Let them walk out the door. Allow them to go their way. Don't chase after them. Don't try to hold them against their will. Because that is something that's going to create resentment and it's only going to fuel the fire and it's going to um cause aggression. Yeah. And you don't want that. Because I mean Chase knows if I'm upset. I go to the other room, I sit in the room, I be quiet, don't talk to me, I'm not going to talk to you. And I leave her ass alone. That's right, you leave me alone because I don't want to, I don't want to deal with it in that moment. And we all have the right to be left alone. Give people their space. If they're asking for it, give it to them. And Rice, she said, I never thought it was about me feeling abandoned. I thought of it as her not taking accountability for her actions. Maybe I should evaluate abandonment on my end. Rice, you know I'm here for you, so you can always inbox me. We can talk about that. I don't know if it, if abandonment is your issue. Chase was just telling telling about her her issue. So that's her her issue. I don't know what yours is, but it's definitely obviously you don't like the fact that she hangs up on you. So it's definitely a sign of disrespect. So you want to first address that. Don't don't make it about abandonment if it's not your issue. You know. So, dang man, this thing was supposed to be about some crap. <laughs> <laughs> but that's good though. I like when we able to. Go ahead. I like when we able to just you know ad lib and work some issues out. One thing that I do, which is good too, um, that y'all might want to try is finding something that helps you work through your problems if i eat some crabs and i got an issue i'm probably going to go through a bushel of crabs because working through it using my hands while i'm thinking always help me deal with my issues mm. and i end up not being as mad or hurt or upset as i was before i started eating the crabs you know oh, so okay. maybe that could be a good tool i'm not saying you have to eat crabs but maybe you could get a coloring book yeah. And color while you think. Or yeah. maybe you could write. You know, you know it's, it's a lot of different talk things. Talk about our journal. Oh, journals too. Both of us have um, little books that we started. She got one on her end table. I got one on my end table. So whenever we feeling something, be it negative or positive, we write it in a journal. Mm -hmm. But the journals are left out. So she can read mine anytime she wants. 
and I can read hers anytime I want. And it's it's just being an open book because a lot of times you can't effectively communicate what you're feeling at that time. So, you know, writing it out, writing it out helps me cuss her out, <laughs> or it helps me, you know. Leave a, a good note in there. Hopefully she'll see it. Sometimes I'll just be like, you sexy as hell. Yeah. And I'll just write that in the book, you know, and and she'll read it. And I'll know when she read my journal then. Because yeah. she'll be like, baby. And I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> so, you know, putting other tools into place other than just talking um, is a good way to help your relationship yeah. grow, you know. If you are one of my clients, you is to get a journal. Journals are so helpful because there are a lot of things that we can't say aloud that if we write it out, it helps us come to a conclusion or it helps us work out what, what we're feeling on the inside that we're not able to express on the outside. So the journaling has been a very good tool for the both of us because sometimes I'm really upset and maybe I don't necessarily want to tell her that I'm upset, but if I write about it and she reads it, then she's like, okay, understand her point. Because sometimes I cannot clearly express exactly what I'm feeling on the inside. So the journaling is a great thing. Another good thing too is the love meter. Love meters are so awesome. It's something that you draw together and you put it on your wall and it's a meter and each day, it, and this is only if you're experiencing problems. If you're not experiencing problems, don't get a love meter. But the journal is really good. But the love meter is something if you're experiencing some type of issue and you're really trying to work through it, you don't know what's going on, you're trying to reconnect with, with each other, the love meter is really awesome. You put it on the wall and you just write, today I'm feeling, I'm at 10% today. The goal is to always be 75, well 85% and above. But if you're feeling 10%, you're able to say, I'm feeling 10% of love today. And you write down why you're feeling that. And then that's a point of discussion that you have with each other and you talk about it. It's a great way to help grow and work on real, real issues. Also, I say have at least a month, a, two, two weeks to three weeks, have a meeting where you're talking about your relationship. And I said it on one of my shows. This is a meeting where you say, this is where we're going. This is what we're doing. This is what's happening. This is what's bothering me. Because sometimes we could just go through the relationship and we're just going, going, going. Five years from now, we're both on two different pages. But you need to always be on the same page. So a monthly meeting is a really good way to make sure you're on the same page. And, and if you're you not... It, you have it in business. You have, you have you have a monthly meeting, a, a corporate meeting. Why do you think they do that? They mm -hmm. do that because they need to touch base and know where their workers are with their projects. They need to know what the company is going to do next. So you can always be cognizant of what's in motion. Mm -hmm. Man, that's a that's a, a really good tip. Mm -hmm. Because I remember I was in one relationship for four years and I'm still thinking stuff from the first year <laughs> and they on year 20. I'm like, dang, man, like, <laughs> how did we get here? You know what I mean? Yeah. But had we been having monthly meetings and, and, and talking about different things that's going on with us, it, it wouldn't have got that way, you know? Yeah. So that's a good idea. Thank you. So anyway, y'all, y'all see she's a tore up her crab. <laughs> so when it's time for me to eat my little Dungeonese, no, Dungeness. it's Dungeness. Yeah. Oh, Lord, that's another thing, y'all. I don't pronounce words the best all the time. But anyway, Dungeness crab. She ain't going to be eating my crab. She thinks she is. Oh, you could okay. eat. You, you gave me two bites. Uh, I'm going to make sure you get two bites. All right, thanks. You know, you can, you're going to probably eat half of the crab with me <laughs> by that time. But anywho. So I hope what we had to say today was helpful. You know, I could talk forever because that's what I do. I love talking, but I'm not going to keep you all on here. Hope you're having a good Easter and that you've learned something. And if you need me, y'all know how to contact me. And you, you know if you need a haircut, you know how to contact Chase. Uh -huh. We love y'all. Bye, I love y'all.
Okay. <laughs> Bye.